Good uh, morning, my friends. How are you? Uh, it's great to be here again, <clears throat> engaging in conversation with you in these unpredictable times uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic uh, spreading across the world. So today I want to reinforce uh, one insight that I think we all need to uh, share with each other. And uh, that insight is that uh, <clears throat> emotions, emotions are more contagious than any virus. Uh, once again, emotions are more contagious than any virus. And a pandemic of panic and stress and uncontrollable fear and anxiety can compromise our immune system and actually hurt us in a way that we do not uh, understand. Emotions such as severe uncontrolled anxiety, stress, the perception of threat and the inability to deal with it, and panic, which is irrational behavior that stems from uncontrolled panic, uncontrolled stress, helplessness, fear and anxiety, uh, causes biological chaos. And the way it does that is through the autonomic nervous system which is, in this case, predominantly um, the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system. So anxiety, uncontrolled stress, panic, uh, puts your sympathetic nervous system on overdrive, as a result of which blood pressure rises, inflammation increases, the levels of cortisol increase and many hormones are antagonists to cortisol so there's endocrine imbalance and cortisol also compromises the immune system making people more susceptible to infection whether it's bacterial infection or viral infection or uh, <clears throat> any other infection parasitic infection but also people with immune compromise, also people with immunocompromisation um, are at risk for other exacerbations of chronic illness and increased morbidity and mortality from other chronic illnesses such as cancer and heart disease and stroke and autoimmune diseases and of course accelerated ageing. So much for unhealthy emotions, and I've mentioned unhealthy emotions in the beginning. Unhealthy emotions include uncontrolled fear, unmanaged stress, panic, uh, anger, hostility, jealousy, um, um, depression, um, guilt shame, all these are disruptive to our biology. On the other hand, we also know uh, from um, good biological evidence that um, um, healthy emotions like um, particularly peace, um, equanimity, joy, empathy, compassion, uh, love of course, kindness, they have a completely different effect on our biology. There's a phenomenon that occurs <clears throat> when we experience those emotions and that phenomenon is referred to as limbic resonance. And in relationship when limbic resonance occurs, there are interesting things that happen. There's not only limbic resonance, there's limbic regulation between people who are engaging in healthy emotions 
and ultimately there's limbic revision, which means even the neural networks get rewired for um, for self regulation and healing and decrease in inflammation and therefore facilitating the healing process. So emotions, of course, only occur in um, the context originally <clears throat> of relationships because emotions are part of our mind and as mind they are both embodied and relational. So right now uh, I and you are engaging in the exchange of energy, information, emotions and thought in cyberspace and as we are engaging in this we are actually influencing each other's neural networks, epigenetic activity and inflammatory markers and even hormone levels. So right this moment, depending on how you're feeling with this engagement, you're either compromising your immune system or you're enhancing its capacity or maybe you are neutral. But the fact is emotions and the mind have no physical location in space or time. And having no physical location in space or time, being both embodied and relational, they are more contagious than any virus. You know, virus uh, is spread through um, closeness physically, you know, through aerosol or vapor, uh, when you sneeze or when you cough uh, and also through oral contamination, fecal oral contamination. But the spread of virus requires physical proximity, at least to some extent. The spread of emotions does not. Uh, we can spread emotions through cyberspace as we are doing right now. So if you sem send somebody an emo emoticon, uh, do it right now, send me an emoticon which says love and you give me an oxytocin hit. Send me an emoticon that says joy and you give me a dopamine hit. Send me um, an emotion that uh, gives me the feeling of um, love and intoxication of love and you give me both an opiate hit, a dopamine hit, and a serotonin hit. And if you are actually experiencing lightness of being, and I can feel it in my body, then uh, you get what is called an anandamide hit, anandamide, the peptide of bliss and joy. And this kind of contagion or pandemic does not require any kind of boundary, national boundary or um, physical boundary or any boundary because in fact uh, emotions are both embodied, relation and relational and non-local. So what uh, emotions do is both compromise our immune system and enhance our immune capacity so that we can be relatively resistant to disease, both acute and chronic. So the question is, what kind of a pandemic do we need right now to counter the contagion of COVID-19 or the coronavirus? And I would say we need a pandemic of gratitude we need a pandemic of joy. We need a pandemic of uh, loving kindness. We need a pandemic of empathy and compassion in order to enhance our capacity for not just physical, not just mental and emotional healing, but actually physical healing. So please, Please remember that our biologies are entangled 
with our emotions. And our emotions are entangled um, collectively right now in cyberspace. And they do not respect the you know, social, physical distancing of six feet and whether you wash your hands or not. You should, of course, do all the things um, that have been recommended. But none of those will actually have any influence on the contagion or pandemic of emotions. Do remember this. So yes, we have to be serious and responsible in uh, stopping the contagion. We have to be serious and responsible uh, and uh, that should not prevent us from also being grateful or feeling unbelievable love and gratitude and even celebrating our existence in the midst of adversity. You know, a long time ago, I heard uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, Thich Nhat Hanh, the uh, Vietnamese uh, monk, and he was giving a very interesting analogy. He said, when we have a toothache, then we feel miserable. But then the toothache goes away uh, because of treatment or whatever. And then we are, for a short while, amazingly happy. We celebrate the curing of our toothache. But <clears throat> he said, why not enjoy your non-toothache and celebrate it all the time. Why not enjoy and with gratitude and celebrate existence all the time? Existence is an unbelievable gift. We didn't even ask for it, but here we are. Existence is the most sacred gift there is existence. Furthermore, non-existence is not an experience. Therefore, non-existence doesn't exist. We only experience existence. It's built into the system that we can never experience non-existence because existence is always experience. Now, how we deal with those experiences is up to us. How we deal with those experiences is up to us. No matter how dire the situation no matter how adverse everything seems, no matter the spread of a viral infection, we can still choose to be grateful for everything that we have experienced that has brought us joy and love and grace and wonder and curiosity and mystery and, um, and uh, just the awareness of existence. So um, how do we experience um, even lightness of being in the midst of everything that's going on? How do we experience stillness even in the midst of movement and chaos? And you can do that anytime by instead of focusing on a situation, turning your attention to the awareness in which that situation is happening, whatever that situation is happening. So instead of focusing on the situation, you turn your awareness to that in which the experience is happening. And you'll see that the awareness of any experience is intrinsically free of that experience. The awareness of any experience is intrinsically free of that experience because the experience arises and subsides in the form of sensations, perceptions, images, feelings, thoughts. And then if you watch it, it moves across the screen of your consciousness and if you turn to that in which the experiences are happening, you'll see that 
that silent witnessing awareness on the screen of which all experience arises and subsides is eternally free. So celebrate lightness of being in the midst of adversity. Celebrate love, celebrate joy and shift your biology from cortisol to adrenaline and inflammation to the peptides that heal, the peptides that are immunomodulators, dopamine, serotonin, opiates, oxytocin, ananda, mind, lightness of being. Now, having said this, it does not mean that we can't be serious about what is going on. But seriousness doesn't imply a demeanor or an attitude of, um, of uh, anxiety, of uh, depression, of uh, um, anger, or even of melodrama. Look at your face right now in the mirror and look at your eyes and your facial expressions and your body language and your gesture. And uh, then even if you have to, as you look at the mirror, let your eyes gleam with joy. Put on a smile, even if you don't feel like. Okay, change the tone of your voice. Relax. Take a deep, deep breath and inhale to the count of six. Stop to the pause to the count of two. Exhale to the count of four. Even as you smile, you'll be actually stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system, which counteracts the sympathetic overdrive. Now, more than ever, we need uh, bagel stimulation, parasympathetic nervous system, resilience, heart rate variability, deep breathing, and a body language that reflects that uh, we... Um, turn to that in which all experience is happening, but which is already independent of all experience before it arises, when it arises, and after it dissipates. In the meanwhile, also spread this contagion of empathy, compassion, love, joy, equanimity, and put it into practice. We can help people, even with physical and social distancing. We can donate money to food uh, kitchens. We can uh, give money to those who are in need. We can um, help uh, in many ways, even through social engagement here through our technology. So, at this moment, ask yourself, irrespective of what is happening, can I increase my capacity um, for immunity? Can I en enhance my immune status? Where are emotions here? How are they playing a role? And if I can cultivate within myself, right this moment, um, what I've always said, the four intentions, joyful, energetic body, love and compassion in our heart, a reflecting alert mind, a reflective alert mind, creative mind. And that brings me to another metaphor that we use. It's a metaphor of violence. Now we have the metaphor on the war against coronavirus. But we've had these metaphors forever. War against cancer, war against malaria, war against drugs, war against poverty, war against war. Uh, we don't need that. If we go to our center, to our creative source, then metaphors for healing become... Um, creative metaphors, 
creative metaphors. We have the collective intelligence, the collective creativity, and if we combine it with our collective desire to help each other, then we have creative solutions that will be coming up in every situation, in every circumstance. Do not force a demeanor of seriousness or um, uh, do not uh, force a demeanor of joy, but look in the mirror and see what you're um, expressing to the world because your inner dialogue right now is projecting not only as your facial expressions and your gestures, but everything you feel affects others. What I feel affects you. What you feel affects me, directly or indirectly. One thing this um, pandemic has shown us is um, there are no boundaries, period. No national boundaries, no no ethnic boundaries, no racial boundaries, no economic boundaries, no biological boundaries, no mental boundaries, because at the source of existence is just one consciousness modulating itself into uh, infinite modes of uh, expression divine and diabolical, sacred and profane. All of those are part of the infinite. But uh, right now, if you can go to the source, say, stay established in the equanimity and the lightness of being that the source is, and from there take action, creative action, and help each other, then we can enhance our capacity for healing, enhance our immunity, regulate our biology, self-regulation and homeostasis to enhance our um, personal and our collective healing. Personal and our collective healing. So, I'm not saying keep positive, be realistic, cultivate a silent, loving mind and surrender to the infinite in you. Because you're not, as Rumi said, just a drop in the ocean, you're also the mighty ocean in the drop. Today, no matter what, pay attention to celebration of life, gratitude of life. It is the sanest and most responsible thing to do. Remember the word responsibility means the ability to respond. And so it is up to us how we respond. With love, compassion, joy, equanimity and action, help. Instead of saying, what's in it for me? How can I serve? So, uh, Reza Khan says, don't encourage him, he's on drugs. Yes, I manufacture my own drugs, my own neuropeptides, which I've mentioned. And actually, in addition to manufacturing uh, dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin and anandamide and other immunomodulators, I also can manufacture in here my own cognac. So thanks you for reminding me of that, Raza. And I hope uh, uh, you're feeling well. Um, so Raza is saying uh, things that I don't want to quote right now on the screen, um, but he means well. And we wish him joy. Okay, so um, in response to Raza actually, uh, I want to read a beautiful Sufi poem from the tradition of Islam. And this comes from Rumi. He says, I have shrunk beyond the smallest atom, expanded 
Pada, then the last star. All that is left of Rumi is only this garden laughing with fruit. The law of wonder rules my life at last. I burn each second of my life to love. Every second of my life burns out in love. In each leaping second, love lives afresh. Dedicated to all of you, but especially to Raza Khan.